Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about black holes once again. And this time we're discussing this very intriguing study that suggests we might have discovered or actually proved observationally that a black hole can hypothetically create more energy than we give it. Something that's currently known as the Penrose process. In other words, it provides the observational proof for the theory that we've had for a very long time that you can hypothetically extract energy from a spinning black hole. But how exactly does all of this work and what exactly is this proof? Well, first of all, the theory behind Penrose process is pretty solid. Mathematically, at least, it definitely makes sense. But it only works for black holes that are spinning, which hypothetically would probably be most of the black holes out there. For example, because of the conservation of angular momentum, as the star shrinks in size and becomes a neutral star, its spin accelerates to the point where it starts spinning thousands of times per second which can then obviously become an even smaller object, a black hole that spins even faster. So the black hole spin is something that we believe exists around most black holes. But the thing about spinning black holes is that the faster they spin, the more unusual properties they start to acquire. So even though technically we don't really understand what happens inside the black hole beyond the event horizon, mathematically it's believed to be some sort of a singularity, a tiny, tiny point. But when this black hole starts spinning, Mathematically, this actually produces a kind of a ring-like object that sometimes is referred to as ringularity, or ring singularity. And this by itself starts producing some really unusual effects right around the black hole as well. And here's how sort of all of this changes. First it acquires inner and outer horizon, and then it also acquires this area you see right here that's referred to as the ergosphere. An ergosphere is that particular region we are kind of interested in. It essentially is the region where the space-time itself is dragged around the black hole to the point where if you were to sort of be inside the ergosphere, you would be forced to spin with the black hole. There is absolutely no way for you to spin against the flow. And so here is an interesting example of an object falling inside the ergosphere and it sort of becomes impossible for the object to orbit in any other direction. It's forced to go with the flow. And so back in the days, Roger Penrose proposed that, hypothetically at least, it's possible for us to extract some of the spinning energy from this region. Because unlike the event horizon, you could hypothetically escape from the ergosphere. And not just escape from it, but also escape from it by acquiring extra energy and thus leave the ergosphere with more energy than what you had before you came in. And at least theoretically, it's possible to acquire up to about 25% extra energy after leaving the ergosphere. There are of course some caveats to this, like for example, you still have to find a way to leave the ergosphere by somehow losing a part of the mass and thus leaving a little bit behind. But once you leave the ergosphere, the mass acquired and the energy acquired is higher than what you had before. And although it might sound like some sort of a weird science fiction phenomenon, apparently it really exists and has actually been proven by using various acoustic equivalents of black holes. I've talked about one major experiment from 2020 in a video somewhere right there that's going to be popping up in the future. And so we know that this extraction of energy from ergosphere is definitely possible, both mathematically and in black holes that were produced using sound effects. But has it actually been observed before? Well, not until now. And this intriguing study you can find in the description below provides an extremely interesting analysis of a gamma ray burst that occurred uh, back in 2019. The most powerful gamma ray burst ever detected. And although back then it wasn't particularly clear what actually caused this gamma ray burst to be so powerful, and even though there were some theories trying to explain all of this, at the moment this right here seems to provide the most accurate and also the most interesting analysis slash explanation to what most likely happened there. Although well, the previous explanation still applies to this gamma ray burst as well. It's just in this particular study, it's clarified even further. But first, what exactly happened? Well, we've talked about this as well, but essentially back in January of 2019, the scientists detected this very unusual, very powerful, extremely bright gamma ray burst that happened in a galaxy about four and a half billion light years away from us. It also emitted a tremendous amount of different frequencies with the afterglow being detected in all sorts of radiation including radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays and so on. And to date, this has been actually the most extensive gamma ray ever. It provided a tremendous amount of data for scientists to study. But it was very difficult to explain what exactly produced such a tremendously powerful gamma ray emission. It was much more powerful than anything previously detected and was very difficult to explain using modern theories. But scientists have tried and succeeded to some extent. 
But something still didn't really make sense. And so this new team decided to see if they can explain this by applying the ideas from Penrose process to it. So in this case, what they believe might have happened was very likely a result of a tremendous amount of energy being extracted from the ergosphere of a newly created black hole. Now, they believe that in the beginning, this was a binary system where a really old and somewhat powerful neutron star, or possibly even a magnetar, was orbiting around another star that was very likely a massive carbon star, or some sort of a carbon oxygen star. This type of an object is expected to create a new neutron star when it goes supernova. And because these objects also generally don't really live very long, it was only a matter of time before it went supernova. But as this was a binary system already with a neutron star present in the region, all of this created a somewhat easy to destabilize system. And so at some point, the carbon oxygen star goes supernova. When this happens, a lot of the material starts to fall into the nearby neutron star, and some of this material obviously escapes and creates the supernova emissions as well. But because the nearby neutron star could have already been at its mass limit, it only required a little bit of mass before it also collapses into a black hole. And so as all of this mass starts to accumulate around the neutron star and obviously producing a lot of other energy as well, at some point the neutron star also reaches its limit. This is known as the TOV limit and mathematically at least it's not entirely clear where this limit lies. But it's believed to be no more than three masses of the sun. And so if a neutron star reaches this mass, it essentially explodes creating a black hole. Which is pretty much exactly what happened, but as it created the black hole, some of the magnetic lines that were present around the original neutron star were still there. And so even though this object has now become a black hole, there were still some of the magnetic lines present in the region, including the ergosphere of the newly spinning black hole. You can kind of see some of these lines present in this image right here. And because some of these lines were now inside the ergosphere, and because the ergosphere was also twisting the space-time itself, all of this extra spin now started to sort of twist and bend all of these magnetic lines, creating even more electrical energy than before. And even though it's really kind of mind-boggling and somewhat difficult to imagine what really happened, a lot of this extra energy that was now being extracted through the magnetic lines then started to be transferred into the gamma ray burst itself, which left the newly created black hole and started to move towards, well, really planet Earth, where we later detected it after four and a half billion years. But all of this extra energy and all of this extra power, according to this paper, was basically taken from the ergosphere, from the rotational energy of the black hole. Which, of course, if correct, means that we now have an observational proof that it's definitely possible to hypothetically steal energy from a spinning black hole, acquiring up to about 25% of extra energy than what you gave it originally. Or in other words, this is the direct observational proof of Penrose process being a real thing, a real phenomenon. A process that we might be able to discover again if we find another one of these binary-driven hypernova like the one we just saw. And in case you were wondering how long all of this took, well, it took about 1.99 seconds for the neutron star to turn into a black hole. And then for the next two seconds, it was producing these powerful gamma ray bursts that technically are the most powerful gamma ray bursts we've ever seen. And so from the supernova until the end of the gamma ray burst, it took about 3.99 seconds, with a lot of the material then falling into the black hole or the neutron star and producing more x-rays that were visible afterwards as an afterglow. And the black hole itself was believed to be about 4.4 masses of the sun, spinning at about 40% of the speed of light, and also having relatively powerful magnetic field as well. Something that they probably received from being the neutron star in the beginning, which is probably something that also happens to a lot of black holes out there. And so definitely a really interesting observation and a very interesting potential confirmation of a really cool theory. But whether we can actually use this one day to somehow create energy out of nothing is of course another question. We still don't really know if we'll ever be able to detect and actually see a black hole somewhere near us, but chances are that it will probably take us a while before we find anything of that caliber. Nevertheless, confirming these theories will probably give us some ideas on how to maybe use this on planet Earth as well. But until we discover something else about this, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the study and the relevant links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support the channel Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.